What's going on guys? Ronan here and welcome back to the channel. We got part five of what if Ash won the Hoenn League. But before we get into that, I'm gonna need you guys to do the usual things. Take a look at the analytics step bar, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to turn on notifications and drop a comment to help fuel the algorithm. But with all that being said, let's get into part five of what if Ash won the Hoenn League. I hope you enjoy. Today we begin with our heroes as they are traveling south of Lava Ridge Town to the site of the next contest in Verdant Turf. Ash and May are excited for the prospect of another contest, but for different reasons. Ash is because his competitive side has taken over and since he won a tough ribbon in the Fall Arbor contest, this is still a good chance to get a second one. She needs to prove herself. The loss she had against Harvey isn't something she has forgotten. However, there is still something else from those events that she still needs to address. The fact that Max caught a Pokemon with one of her Pokeballs. Looking at her brother, May wants to scold him for doing this without actually getting permission and taking advantage of the confusion. However, she is forced to drop the subject as the group has finally made their way off of the cliffside that they were on into the valley that it has a direct path to Burden Turf. It's here that Brock tells everyone they should stop for lunch. This is a good place as once they get into the Valley of Steel, they won't be able to stop for too long as the Pokemon in the area of the Hoenn region are known for being the most aggressive steel types that one can encounter. There really are no objections here as everyone has something they want to do. Max is simply taking his mind off of Slackoth by playing and bonding with Sarskit. May wants to practice her contest routine with Saviper and her opener, Torchic, and she plans to use Beautifly and its wings to train the power of Torchic and its fire moves. The Chicken Little has had the least amount of training of any one of her Pokemon, and May wants to help increase the intensity of its flames with Beautifly's gust, while Saviper uses its strike pattern to help with its agility and speed. Since they are waiting for lunch, Ash decides it's time to address the big problem on his team. With Pikachu and Slackoth by his side, Ash pops the ball for Grovile. As the Gecko emerges, Ash prepares for any type of regression from his Hoenn starter. However, it's the exact opposite. Grovile is calm and collected, much to Ash's relief. Grovile, Ash says, I hope we could talk about the other day. You see, Ash is feeling a little guilty about it as it's been about four days since the lizard has been out of its ball. Ash refused to let it out so that it would rest. And with how stubborn the grass type is, Ash figured that this may be the best way for some cooldown time since the last time they saw each other wasn't the best of circumstances. However, as Ash begins to explain the reasons behind his action, Grovile just turns and walks walks to a set of rocks at the edge of camp. It then looks to the rocks and the new foliage on its arms. With a gleam in its eye, Grogoval charges its new weapons and begins striking the rocks. So it's fine with everything, Ash questions? Well, I guess we'll get back to the training, the boy says with enthusiasm. So he and the others join in the wood gecko, as Pikachu uses its iron tail on one of the rocks while Slackoth just cheers on the two. Once Pikachu slams a near perfect attack on the boulder, Ash gives a command to Grovile to use rock tomb. However, the grass type just continues to strike the rocks with its fury cutter. It's at this moment Ash realizes there is a bigger problem than he had originally thought. This brings us to Brock. He is cooking up a storm with his two culinary assistants, Lotad and Cacnea. Both mons have proven invaluable for Brock's cooking quick meals on the road. Lotad and its dish make a perfect bowl that self-cleans, while Cacnea and its massive limbs are perfect for tenderizing meat and crushing things that need flavor brought out of them. With the three working diligently, it isn't long until there is a fire going and they have a nice hearty stew in the works. Thanking the two for the help, Brock then pulls out something special for them, his own secret recipe of Pokeblock. After all the tinkering that he's been doing, Brock has been able to find a correct balance for both Cacnea and Lotad. Being a breeder, Brock is happy with the results that he has been shown as both of his Pokemon have gained more vibrant colors to their coats. It's obvious that the two are healthier because of this miracle block. As the two munch on the small snack, Brock prepares by setting up the dining area. As he does, there is a rustling that can be heard in the distance. This gets the attention of the group who realizes it was a good idea to stop now, but this collective idea is interrupted by Brock who calls every everyone to come in. The food is ready. Ash tells Grovile they should go eat but again, the grass type ignores Ash, slicing away at the rocks with its fury cutter. Not wanting to rock the boat, Ash chooses to eat without it, so he can think of a way to get it on the same page. Now gathered to eat, May compliments Brock on his food, saying it's amazing what he can do in such little time with such little resources out here on the road. He thanks her, saying it takes a lot of practice, but he's gotten it down to an exact science. Brock then turns to begin dishing up the soup that has been boiling to perfection for an hour or so. However, just as he dips the ladle in the broth, something swoops the entire cooking set up from underneath him, destroying the meal in the process. This is then followed by a loud thud as a Pokemon crashes into the table that Brock had set up. Now concerned about his friends, Brock rushes over to their side, checking up on them one by one. Once he confirms everyone is okay, Brock then turns his attention to the flailing table cloth that has bound itself around of a Pokemon of some sort. Brock approaches this cloth in order to try and get some order in the area. Pulling at the linen, Brock reveals a very scared and frantic Pokemon. Torkoal, Brock says? The fire tortoise is panicking like it's frightened by something. Brock does his 
best to calm it down, even petting the fire type on the head. This gets an unexpected reaction from it as Torkoal finally calms down enough to realize what's going on. Then, it begins crying uncontrollably as a show of affection for the former gym leader. However, this is quickly interrupted when Torkoal then tenses up as a roar echoes from within the valley. This gets the attention of everyone, including Grovile, as its presence cannot be ignored. However, our heroes won't have to wait long as a familiar figure appears running from the group of Pokemon chasing him. Is that Morrison, may I ask? I think so, Ash responds, as the redhead runs into the group asking them for help. There are a bunch of steel types that are after him. Turning, Ash and his friends can see that he's not wrong. A group of Magneton and Laron, with a Steelix and Skarmory at their head, are on the move headed in the direction of the group. Realizing things are about to get rough, Ash tells Pikachu to get ready. They're going to have to battle. Seeing this as an opportunity to test its new firepower, May chooses to engage with Torchic. But they are not the only Pokemon that get involved, as Lotad and to Ash's surprise, Grovile get involved as well. The group of defending Pokemon all attack at once, causing the herd of steel types to stop in their tracks. It is here that Ash questions Morrison on what he did to trigger the aggression of all of these Pokemon. Morrison responds that he didn't do anything, he was just walking along, minding his own business, when he noticed that Torkoal was being attacked for no reason. So he tried to step in to help, but this just caused them to get aggressive and Steelix hit Torkoal with an iron tail, sending it flying. Then they proceeded to chase me because their leader ordered them to. Who's the leader? Ash asks. Morrison points to a Pokemon that sits atop the crown of Steelix. Ash pulls out his Pokedex to learn that this Pokemon is known as Mawile, a steel type known for its false appearances. It's here Mawile jumps down to address the group. It doesn't seem to be too happy with these humans and the fire type that has made their way into its territory. This is an unfortunate turn of events as it seems like the only way they will be able to get out of this is to actually battle. May chooses to engage the Skarmory and the Magneton with Torchic, while Morrison uses his newest catch, a Growlithe, to take on the Laron. This leaves the Steelix and Mawile that Ash stares down with Pikachu and Grovile. What follows is a battle spread out over the vast area allowing the humans to separate the Steel types, leaving Brock to make sure that Torkoal is okay. While the turtle is physically fine, it shows some trauma due to the encounter that it had incurred. However, it's fixated on one Pokemon in general, the Steelix that Ash is battling. While Pikachu and Grovile are holding their own, it's clear that they're not working together as Grovile is doing its own thing, like the Wood Gecko is testing its new power. Turning to the tortoise, Brock asks if it would like a chance for a little payback. Bellowing smoke from its nostrils, Torkoal signals that it likes this idea as it begins to move to the battle. Over with Ash, he is doing his best to get his Pokemon on the same page. While Pikachu has no problem with this, Grovile, on the other hand, seems to be only interested in one thing, testing its strength against the biggest thing here, Steelix. While it will use moves Ash commands, when it comes to combining attacks with the Electric Mouse, Grovile is against it, choosing to battle solo. This is beginning to get under Ash's skin as he yells Grovile that they need to work together or they won't win. But again, the Grass Starter ignores Ash, slamming the Iron Snake with another Fury Cutter. Grovile is confident it's doing a great deal of damage as, with the practice of the move, it has discovered the secret to Fury Cutter. It gets strong stronger with each consecutive hit. However, there is one thing that the grass type is overlooking that Ash has tried to point out. The bug type move isn't making much headway against the hide of the steel type, and each hit only is an annoyance to it. As Grovile lands one more attack, it retreats proudly thinking it will only be moments until Steelix will fall. However, the snake tunnels down, only to emerge with a dig that hits the grass type. As Grovile heads into the air, Steelix tries to close its jaws down on it with a crunch. However, this is stopped with the flamethrower striking the iron snake, dropping it from the paint. Turning, Ash can see that Brock and Torkoal have joined the battle. So Brock, a new friend? Ash asks. Maybe, but first let's deal with this, he says, as Ash and Brock engage with Pikachu and Torkoal in the battle with Mawile and Steelix. Grovile watches this as the two begin to push back the Steel types. Over with Morrison, he and his Growlithe have been making great progress taking out most of the Laron. Realizing that one of these things could be a great member to his team, Morrison readies a Pokeball in preparation to catch one. However, Steelix emerges from behind the boy, dodging a flamethrower from Torkoal. This is when Brock thinks back to when he had a talk with Flannery. She told him that Torkoal are capable of super powerful moves that are called Overheat. Just remember that each time you need to use it, it will get weaker. With this weakness in mind, Brock tells Torkoal to be ready. This is where Steelix surfaces by Morrison only to be hit with an Overheat. This forces Steelix to drop from the intensity, causing Morrison's ball to jump from his hand and land on the Iron Snake, catching it all in one moment. This leaves the Redhead shocked, but Brock knows that this isn't over as he can see the other Steel types are all beginning to attack again. While May and Torchic have made great progress, they can't continue at this rate. Brock sees this and realizes there's only one reason why everything is still attacking, and it's because Ash is battling Mawile. Yelling over, Brock tells Ash that they need to knock out Mawile, or this won't end. 
However, Ash is one step ahead of his friend, as he now has an understanding of Mawile's battle style. Its weakness is its two mouths, and Ash plans to exploit it, telling Pikachu to use Iron Tail on them. However, Mawile just chomps down on it with a bite, stopping the mouse cold. But this is what Ash wanted, as a thunder is enough to drop the Steel-type princess. Then, without hesitation, Ash throws a Pokeball. After three shakes, Mawile is registered as his fourth capture of the Hoenn region. Realizing their leader and muscle have been captured, the rest of the Steel-types begin to disperse, leaving our heroes to finally get a breath from the pandemonium that has been happening. Now that things have slowed down, the group begins to collect themselves. Both trainers pick up their respective new captures. Morset is unsure how to handle this as he didn't really want this particular Pokemon and it's a bit more aggressive than a novice trainer may be able to handle. So for the time being, he belts the ball until he has a solution. As for Ash, he's excited, immediately releasing Mawile so that they can become more familiar with each other. However, Ash is met with something unexpected. Mawile is sobbing uncontrollably. Ash begins to talk to it, to which the Pokemon pretends not to notice the boy at first. But this is quickly canned when Mawile's tummy begins rumbling, signaling that it's hungry. This is where Brock tells it not to worry, he can have a meal ready in a few minutes. About 30 minutes later, we see Brock finishing up the second meal as he uses Torkoal as a makeshift stovetop as it provides many different spots that could be like burners as Torkoal can control the flow of heat to each hole individually. This results in a meal that is far more extensive than the first one. Everyone sits down to eat while Brock thanks Torkoal for its help. This causes it to tear up once again. While Brock and his new friends talk, Ash gets a chance to see what his new Pokemon is like, and oh boy is he in for it. Mawile is a straight up princess, as it sits waiting for someone to bring its meal. Ash is beginning to see that this is going to be another Pokemon that tests his ability as a trainer. This brings things to May and Morrison, as they talk about everything that had happened. Morrison explains that he was on his way to Mawile City to challenge for his first gym badge. May says that they will be heading that way after they hit the contest in Verdanturf. The redhead then asks if Ash is going to enter the contest. May says she's not entirely 100% sure. Ash won the last one he was in, but he hasn't really said anything to her at this point. Morrison realizes that he is far behind his self-appointed rival, so in an effort to catch up, he stands up thanking Brock for the delicious meal, then says he has to go, before walking away without another word. What's his problem, Ash asks, but May tells him that she didn't know, only for Ash to get back to stopping Mawile from trying to rule over his other Pokemon. After a while, the group decides that they have been here for far longer than they needed to be, so if they hope to make it to the contest in time, they are going to have to travel through the night. Before setting off, Brock says goodbye to his new friend, telling it to not get in any more trouble. However, Torkoal won't let Brock leave without it, having grown attached to the breeder. Brock asks if it would like to come along, to which the turtle cries in approval. Pulling out a Pokeball from his belt, Brock adds the fire type to his culinary team. And this just leaves one loose end. Grovile. Walking to it, Ash grips its ball, preparing for another altercation as he attempts to recall it. Hey Grovile, Ash yells, it's time to go. The wood gecko powers down one of the blades on its arms, giving him a look of disapproval, but Grovile doesn't fight Ash on this, as it is recalled. Ash lets out a sigh of relief, but deep down he knows that things between the two are not okay. From here, the group moves on, traveling through the night. As the sun begins to caress the horizon, the group emerges from the valley at the top of Verdanturf. Everyone is exhausted from the long trip and hurries to the Pokemon Center to get a room and some much needed sleep before the contest that is in less than 24 hours. However, May realizes that before she can get some sleep, she needs to register. May says that she will be back soon. She needs to get to the contest hall so she can enter. Realizing she's right, Ash takes off in pursuit, leaving both Brock and Max to head into the center and get a room. This is where both Ash and May find themselves at the contest contest hall, standing in a huge line awaiting registration. It takes so long for them to get to the front of the line that both Ash and May nod off multiple times from the wait. This culminates when they finally make it to the front of the line, but nod off before the next person is registered. Now irritated with these two, the reception yells for Ash and May to pay attention and get up to the counter if they are here to enter the contest. Snapping out of their snoring session, the adrenaline kicks in for both as they rush to the counter, apologizing as they are added to the roster of the contest. As the two finish the registration and the scolding from the receptionist, they hustle away to avoid any further embarrassment. However, they don't get as far as May's name is called by a very familiar voice. Oh no, she thinks, as she turns hoping it's not who she thinks it is. However, it's exactly the person she thinks it is, Harley. May shudders at this as Harley addresses her in his friendly yet condescending tone. He says that she looks tired and she shouldn't be entering the contest if she can't stay awake. After all, good old Harley is the only friend that she really has and he has May's best interest in mind. 
However, both her and Ash have once again dozed off on their feet, having completely lost interest in him. Harley begins to yell not to ignore him, or he may be forced to stop being so nice. Then it hits him. Harley will go tell the tournament official that May has dropped from the contest for personal reasons. This gets May to wake up, telling the slimy coordinator to mind his own business. She will be fine. Now offended that his generosity has been thrown back in his face, Harley says that he's done looking out for May. All he did was treat her like a little sister, but from here on out, that won't be the the case. He then stomps off as May and Ash head the other way so that they can finally get some sleep. Once they get to the center, the two head to their room, finding both Brock and Max passed out. Knowing these two have the right idea, both May and Ash crawl into bed with their clothes still on, falling asleep as soon as their heads hit the pillow. The rest of the day passes without incident as our heroes sleep off their fatigue. However, May is the only one whose anxiety kicks in, waking her up. She realizes it's almost sunset and she needs to polish her act if she has any hopes for tomorrow. Grabbing her Pokeballs, May heads outside leaving the boys to their sweet dreams. A few hours pass and May is on fire. She feels that Survivor and Torchic are in tip-top shape. She's been using both Beautifly and Surskit to help in their training. Much to her surprise, the water type is a very speedy little thing that has a very powerful bubble beam. It was the perfect counter that allowed Torchic some great practice. However, her peaceful training is interrupted when Max comes out demanding to know why she is using Surskit without his permission. May is a bit shocked by this as she thought Max was still asleep as he picks up the water bug. Well, why did you take it? The boy demands to know. Now past her shock, May tells Max that she can use Surskit if she wants. It's her Pokemon. No, it's my Pokemon, Max says. I caught it. Now angry at Max, and not really having addressed the Dawn fan in the room, May erupts in anger at Max, telling the boy that Surskit is technically her Pokemon, as it was caught in her Pokeball, so she can do with it as she pleases. This forces Max to get quiet. May goes on to say that what he did was low, just like how he would treat trainers in the gym, lying to them to get your own way. This is the behavior that makes people not want to be friends with you. This statement causes the boy's eyes to well up with tear as he screams May just doesn't understand before running off while holding Surskit, leaving May speechless as Max disappears into the Pokemon Center. Looks like you're having a tough night, a voice says, causing May to turn. There stands Grace, to which May is glad to see a friendly rival after dealing with Harley earlier in the day. Yeah, that's my brother, and he caught that Surskit with one of my Pokeballs without my permission. He thinks that it's his Pokemon, but it's registered to me. Sounds like you got yourself quite in a tough spot, Grace responds. You can say that again. I wasn't even using it for the contest, just a practice for the contest. Can I offer a perspective of someone on the outside looking in? Grace asks. Sure, May says, as she doesn't really have an idea of what Max's outburst was about. Well, if you ask me, there's something that Max is trying to deal with. What? I don't know, but whatever it is, it has to do with some big change that has happened to him recently. So you may want to cut him some slack, as he is younger and doesn't know how to voice what's bothering him. May looks in the direction Max ran, pondering what Grace just said. The next morning, our heroes find themselves in the contest. Hall. While Ash and Brock have an idea of what they are here for, May seems to be lost focusing trying to talk with Max. But after the previous night, the boy wants nothing to do with his sister walking off taking Surskit with him. This is where Harley reappears, throwing in little low blows about how May is a bad sister for how she treats Max and she isn't worthy of him, let alone her Pokemon. Luckily, Grace is here driving Harley off, telling May to ignore him as he will say or do anything to get an advantage. May responds that it's not only Harley that's getting to her, but Max. She is trying to make up with him, but he doesn't want anything to do with her. Well, maybe the best thing is just to give him time. Focus on the contest, and Max will still be around afterwards. May realizes that Grace is right. She came all this way and practiced so hard that if she doesn't focus now, then she will be thrown in her way. This leaves us with Brock and Ash. The breeder questions Ash on his strategy. He didn't even practice that much, so is he really ready for this? Ash responds that even though he's had some issues with Grovile and his newest catch, Mawile, he's confident that he will be able to get another win. After all, he got a ribbon in the last contest. Well, that was a different type of tournament, Brock says. Remember, this contest is based on beauty, so a headstrong, tough style may not do well here. However, Ash just ignores this, confident in his style. So as he and May prepare for the demonstration round, Brock begins to talk with all the people that are not in the contest. He has one goal here. He's looking for a very specific berry, and the breeder hopes to find it. As Brock begins his search, we fade to Max outside. He's sitting with Surskit, basically telling it that the bug type is the only one who truly understands him. Max then looks at the contest hall, thinking that it may be time for him to go do things for him. Back inside, the demonstration rounds have started. May was able to scorch her 
way through to the next round with Torchic and its new secret move. Mei has focused on a style using a fire tornado like little hoops that Torchic can jump through as if it's playing on a playground. The flames really bring out the beauty of the chick even though it's still more on the cute side. Mei easily makes her way to the first battle rounds. The cactern clad man is able to secure his spot in the next round by using his spinda from the last contest. Its natural balance issues have been heightened by its abilities to use icy wind turning its wobbling into an elegant dance that impresses the judges. While Grace proves that she has what it takes to stun the competition with her Illumise, as with the dim of the lights and an execution of its tail glow shows just how the bug types are underutilized. It even gets an ovation from the president Mr. Contesta. This just leaves Ash. He is confident going in choosing to use Pikachu as the center of attention while Slackoth and his new Mawile are his assistants. As Ash starts, his overconfidence quickly begins to show as his direct and tough style of battling is on full display. While Pikachu masterfully wields its iron tail and thunderbolts, there are no technique behind them. The mouse is just putting nothing but power behind it. At the end of Ash's demonstration round, he actually has the lowest score of out of all the coordinators, leaving the boy to ponder what he did wrong, as he will not be moving on to the second round. However, there is one surprising thing that comes out of this. Mawile seems to enjoy these contests, as even though Ash did horrible and no one really cheered for him, the Steel type can't help but to take a bow to the audience, as it revels in the attention. This doesn't go unnoticed by our hero, but he has more pressing matters to deal with, like figuring out why he couldn't get past the first round. Because Ash did so poorly, this leaves the top four to Grace, Harley, May, and a newcomer that lives locally, Timmy. The pairings are as follows, Harley versus Grace in round one, and May versus Timmy in round two. The first round is a tough one as Grace uses her Medicham to try and secure another contest spot in the finals. However, Harley has been training hard, and as a result, his Cacnea has evolved into its much more powerful final evolution, Cacturn. This surprise is enough to give Harley the upper hand as Grace was unaware of the Cactus's new dark typing, making her lose points when Medicham tried a confusion on it. Then Harley used its free opening to execute a well-timed needle arm that landed in the gut of Medicham, knocking it out and eliminating Grace from the tournament. Now we follow up with May. She finds herself in a battle with Timmy and his Dusclops. The ghost type is proving to be difficult for May and Saviper, as its control over Will-O-Wisp and Nightshade is proving to be a barrier she wasn't prepared for. The Spectre is able to use them with such mastery that not only causes May's points, but it does a great job at highlighting the colors of Dusclops. This is starting to get to May as she hasn't been able to gain any control or hit for any points and they are already halfway through their 5 minute round. Realizing the only way she will be able to get a win is if she gets a knockout, May decides to try something a little crazy. As Timmy calls for another Will-O-Wisp, May orders Saviper to rush in directly into the flames. This catches Timmy off guard, especially when May pulls out all the stops and orders the haze right in the flames. This is where Timmy finds out something May learned when she was training for this contest. The haze is flammable. This causes the Will-O-Wisp to blow up in Dusclop's face, resulting in a flinch. This gives just enough time to order one final move with Saviper emerging from the center of the flames to land a bite on the ghost type, one-shotting it in the process, and moving May on to the final round. May is relieved, but needs to get Saviper some attention as it has suffered a burn from the multiple Will-O-Wisp that it took. Luckily, Brock is present, having gathered some rare berries from the Pokeblock people in the contest lobby. It just so happens that he was able to get some Yago berries, which helps heal burn very fast. This brings us to the final round. In the crowd sits Ash and Brock. While Brock is full on with his attention in the battle, Ash has his attention somewhere else. He can't shake the feeling of his loss today. He won the last contest so easily, but this one, he couldn't even make it past the demonstration round. What was the reason? While Ash ponders this, we focus on May. Well, actually just beyond May, as Max is watching her from the sidelines out of view of everyone else. He is watching her give commands to Viper. After what happened the previous night, Max is scared that in order to spite him, May will either do one of two things. One, she will just claim Surskit for herself, telling Max he can't have anything to do with it. Or the second and more hurtful of the decisions is May will release Surskit to punish the boy for doing what he did. In reality, Max isn't just a dumb kid. He and May both knew what he did was wrong, and Max knew the difference on how he went about it. This causes Max to begin to feeling guilty of what happened, and if May is going to make her decision, then he's going to take it out of her hands. On the field, the finals are in full swing. Saviper and Cacturn are showing no quarter 
as Harley feels disrespected after the way May treated him. So to punish the brat, Harley is doing his best to cause as much pain to May's Pokemon as possible. However, May and Viper seem to be unfazed by this. She knows what Harley has on his mind and is using his tunnel vision to her advantage. The timer is counting down, and so Viper is using its striking pattern to keep Cacturn chasing it. Then, whenever the cactus gets close, a poison tail connects, hitting it for a good deal of damage. Harley is getting frustrated and making mistakes. As a result, time runs out with May having a significant amount of points over Harley. When he hears the results, Harley can do nothing but object to this result. His outburst is a source of tension that gets the attention of Mr. Contesta. The president tells him that if he doesn't leave the venue at once, then he will be disqualified from the Grand Festival as a whole. Harley reluctantly vanishes, vowing revenge on May for what she did to him. This leaves our hero to collect her first ribbon of the Hoenn region. As May looks on to the standing ovation she has from the crowd, for the first time since her journey began, she knows this is the right path that she is on. Now we switch things over over to a city that sits just on the coast known as Slayport. This city is famous for its museums and shipyards as they develop some of the greatest seafaring tech in all of Hoenn. Unfortunately, the shipyard has become the target of some rather shady individuals as they seek one of the newest pieces of tech to come out of it. And this is where we are going to leave things for now. So tell me, how do you feel about part 5 and the way it turned out? How did you enjoy it? How do you feel about Ash's newest catch in Mawile? Is Max overreacting to May and what is she going to do? How how do you feel about May's first win with Survivor, and who's after what in Slateport? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's all we had for today's video. I really appreciate you guys stopping by to watch all the way to the end. And I just wanted to say thank you for that. If you guys really enjoy my content, consider following me on some of my other platforms like Discord, where you can get to know other people who are interested in what ifs, or on Twitter, where I post sometimes behind the scenes updates. Or if you want to help the channel grow a little bit extra, why don't you consider donating like the people right here have? As whatever you could offer could help us get to a larger audience by helping us get new videos done, or some of the projects that we've been working Custom art is getting kind of expensive. So we want to make sure that we have the funds to do that. But with all that being said, I really hope you guys enjoyed everything and I will see you in the next video.